the police have confirmed that four men were shot and killed in Central Village in the wee hours of Friday morning. Reports reaching the local media are that the bodies of the men were found at the rear of a house in the Chinatown area of Windsor Heights at approximately 3 a.m. It is presumed that the men were gunned down at the location. A high alert has been activated for 12-year-old Dwight Hanchard of Henry Morgan Avenue, Kingston 11, who has been missing since Wednesday, July 26. He is of dark complexion, stout build, and about 5 feet tall. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that at, at about 11.45 a.m., Dwight was seen at home wearing a pink shirt and red shorts. Efforts to locate him have been futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Dwight Hanchard can share information with the Hunts Bay Police at 876-923-7111, the Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. One man was arrested and charged following the seizure of a firearm and ammunition on Port Royal Street, Kingston, on Friday, July 28. Charged with unauthorized possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition is 44-year-old Richard de Souza, a watchman of Water Lane, Kingston. Reports from the Central Police are that at about 12.45 a.m., a team was conducting operations in the area when the premises being occupied by de Souza was searched. One Glock 17 pistol with a magazine containing three 9mm cartridges was found on his bed among clothing. He was subsequently arrested and charged while a court date is being arranged for him. A St. Catherine Mason is facing wounding charges after he reportedly shot a man in the face on Shenton Avenue in Westchester, Portmore, in the parish on November 14, 2020. Marvin Bailey, 48, of Berry Drive in Lauriston, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, was captured by police in Westchester on Saturday, July 22, after being on the run for over two years. He has been charged with wounding with intent and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Reports are that about 6.45 a.m., Bailey allegedly approached the man at a garage and opened gunfire hitting him in the face before escaping in the area. The police were summoned and the injured man was assisted to hospital where he was treated. Bailey managed to evade lawmen after the incident. However, he was finally captured and placed on an identification parade where he was pointed out and subsequently charged. A Jamaican man who allegedly attacked another man with a machete was on Monday taken into custody by police in New Jersey, United States. Romario Douglas, 27, is said to have fled the scene of a June 22 incident in which he slashed the wrist of a man with a machete during a dispute. Police tracked down Douglas and arrested him on Monday before charging him with aggravated assault and weapons possession. He is to make his first appearance in Central Judicial Processing Court in Patterson, New Jersey next week. The jury has found Andre Thomas guilty in the double murder of two U.S. missionaries in 2016 in St. Mary. Thomas was remanded until October 13 when a date for sentencing will be scheduled. Harold Nichols, 53, and Randy Hensel, 49, were missionaries for the Pennsylvania-based Teams for Medical Missions. They went missing on Saturday, April 30, 2016, after leaving their Tower Isle. St. Mary Homes on motorcycles to visit a site where they would be doing charity work the following week. When they did not return, a search party later that day discovered Hensel's body lying face down, his green helmet still over his head, with his arms bound tightly behind his back by a piece of cloth torn from the green t-shirt in which he was clad. Nichols' body was found some distance away on the Sunday afternoon. Thomas and his co-accused, Dwight Henry, were arrested in June 2016. Henry had taken a plea deal, pleaded guilty, and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole until 28 years. The case was being tried in the Supreme Court. Most people attend the annual Denby Agricultural Show to see the finest in Jamaican livestock and produce. Others go to feast on the Word of God. The High Pro Denby Gospel Extravaganza returns on August 6 at Denby Showground in Clarendon with Kevin Downswell, Gotti Gotti, and Carlene Davis as main acts.
Tommy Cowan of Glory Music is organizer for the event, which he credits for helping to revive the annual agricultural showpiece. Last year was our biggest to date. I thought we had at least 15,000 persons in the audience, conservatively. We began doing this event some 26 years ago intentionally to improve the sparse crowds that were at Denby. But as time went by, it became more purposeful, especially with the role of High Pro as the major sponsor lifting the praises to God Almighty for provisions of the land, the farmers, and winning souls for the kingdom of God. The audience became bigger, more receptive, and worshipful, he said in an interview with the local media. This year's show features first-timers Petra Kay, saxophonist Verlando Small, and Reverend Steve Hepburn with The Word. The Denby Agricultural Show was first held in 1952. It has been a stomping ground for everyone from genius cattle breeder and scientist Dr. T.P. Leckie to small farmers whose produce are sold in supermarkets and family-owned stores. In 1996, there came a different aspect to the Denby Expo with the Gospel Events debut. It returned last year after a two-year break due to the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. One man is dead after sustaining injuries in a four-vehicle collision on the Discovery Bay Main Road in St. Anne on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as 32-year-old Donovan Thomas, a security guard of Middle Buxton in the parish. According to the police, the collision involved a white Toyota Corolla driven by Thomas, a silver Mitsubishi SUV, a white Toyota Coaster, and a green Honda Civic motor car. Lawmen report that around 6.15 p.m., Thomas was traveling along the thoroughfare when he lost control of his vehicle and collided with the Toyota Coaster, which caused the other two vehicles to crash. The fire brigade and police were called to the scene, and upon their arrival, Thomas and the occupants of the other vehicles were taken to hospital, where Thomas later succumbed. An alleged eyewitness said the incident happened due to the wet conditions of the road. He cautioned drivers to be very vigilant while traversing the St. James to St. Anne thoroughfare as it is a known accident hotspot. <music> Chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, Corporal Rohan James, has been interdicted following strong statements he made against the police high command at a recent funeral. In a letter dated July 26 and obtained by the media, James was cited for remarks made on July 15 and, after a probe, disciplinary action was recommended. James has been critical of the high command's handling of the issue of overtime pay. The letter states that James will receive three-quarter pay with immediate effect during the interdiction. James is to cease duties with the Jamaica Constabulary Force in keeping with Regulations 35-1 of the Police Service Regulations 1961. He is to hand over his identification card and all government-issued property in his possession upon receipt of the notice. The notice also states that James is not to leave the island without the permission of the Governor General and should provide two months' notice of planned travel with the senior superintendent in charge of the division. James is also to give all contact details to the police and updates if and when changes are made to his place of residence. 